Hello everyone, and thank you for your interest in our presentation for IROS 2021. I am Yasunori Toshimitsu from ETH Zurich and the University of Tokyo, and I will present our work, SOPRA, Fabrication and Dynamical Modeling of a Scalable Soft Continuum Robotic Arm with Integrated Proprioceptive Sensing. So in our work, we use soft robotic arms, which can be used as manipulators while ensuring compliance at the hardware level. Past research done on soft robotic arms include environmental contact experiments where the arm compliantly traces along a surface, dynamic closed-loop motion control where the arm follows a dynamic trajectory, or human-robot cooperation. Such robots can safely interact with the environment with more compliance than rigid link robots and thus is safer around humans. Let's compare conventional rigid link robots and soft robotic arms. We can roughly categorize rigid arms into position-controlled arms and torque-controlled arms. The two metrics that we compare here are the compliance, or how soft the robot is, and how modelable and controllable it is. Compliance is important for behaviors that involve contact with the environment, and it is also important for safety. The modelability and controllability is obviously important, as a robot is only as good as how effectively you can control it to execute tasks. For position-controlled arms, they are rigidly controlled, but they can emulate some compliance through impedance control. For torque-controlled arms, each motor implements torque control which is inherently compliant, however the hardware itself is still rigid and heavy. The modeling and control of these rigid arms have been extensively researched, and there are many effective methods to control it. Soft robots are compliant at the material level, so it is the most compliant and safest among, among these robots. However, the modeling and control of these robots is not nearly as thoroughly realized as that of rigid robots. So in this work, by developing the design in tandem with its dynamical model, we try to improve its modelability of soft robots. Here I will go over some of the works related to fabrication, sensing, and modeling of pneumatic actuators. First is this research for the fabrication and modeling of fiber reinforced pneumatic actuators. They have created an analytical model describing the bending of fiber reinforced actuators, and we have referred to this works extensively when formulating our model as well. Next, this paper from our group implemented dynamic closed loop control on a spatial soft robotic arm, where we used an augmented rigid arm for computing dynamic parameters. Finally, in this work, they have attached Kirigami style conductive sensors to the skin of the robot for integrated proprioceptive sensing. Because of the highly nonlinear nature of the readouts from these sensors, a neural network was used for interpolating the sensor signals from the sensors. Here are the main contributions of this work. We have derived an analytical dynamical model for describing the behavior of fiber reinforced soft robots. We have proposed a method to embed flex sensors into a soft robot to take proprioceptive measurements. Finally, we propose a formulation which can combine the measurements from the proprioceptive sensors and the dynamic model to estimate the load held by the gripper. For the rest of the presentation, I will explain our approach based on the three design principles for SOPRA, the soft continuum proprioceptive arm. The first one is geometric scalability. The arm has to be easy to adapt to different sizes and numbers of segments. We must explore how to vary this cross-sectional shape for each segment while retaining the same fabrication method. Here is an overview of SOPRA's design. Three fiber-reinforced chambers are combined with a flex sensor to form a single actuated segment. The center of a segment also contains air tunnels, which connect to the distal chambers. These 3D printed connector pieces route the air tunnels between segments. The segments are then combined with a soft pleated gripper and a base piece to form the completed arm. Next, I will explain the fabrication procedure of creating the arm from silicone. First, we fabricate each fiber in reverse chamber. Here are the 3D printed molds used for casting. After pouring and curing the silicone, we manually wrap fibers around the chambers. We have tested our arm with both fishing wires and sewing threads. Next, we prepare the flex sensor and the cables. We use these flex sensors from Bend Labs, which outputs a linear measurement of the bending angle. We will explain more about the sensor model in a future slide. We connect the sensor, cable, and the electrical connectors together. The sensors can be daisy-chained across segments, 
So we have four wires running along the arm with the ground, BCC, and two I2C signal channels shared across all of the segments. Finally, we wrap the sensor with fabric for protection from silicone and to prevent lengthwise stretching. Next, we assemble three chambers and the sensors together to create a single actuated segment. Note that here we use these 3mm rods in order to form the air supply lines. We use silicone bonding to bond the three chambers together. Finally, we assemble it into a single arm by using these SLA printed connectors. These have integrated air pathways which route the air tubes across segments. The next design principle is analytic modelability. We develop an analytical dynamical model that closely matches the actual behavior of the arm. Although it is outside the scope of this particular paper, this could be used in model-based controllers for soft robots unlocking new behaviors for these types of robots. Here's the dynamic model of Supra. The first term is the pressure input to each chamber, and the second term is the external force at the tip. Then these three terms are the dynamic parameters calculated from the augmented rigid body model based on a previous publication. I will briefly explain how these were derived. The augmented rigid body model approximates the kinematics and dynamics of the soft robot through a series of rotational and prismatic joints. The dynamic parameters of this model, such as the inertia matrix or the centrifugal and Coriolis forces, can be calculated with standard robotics libraries since this is a conventional robotic link chain. They are then mapped to the original soft robot, which is modeled as a series of piecewise constant curvature or PCC segments. They are mapped using the Jacobian between Xi, which is the joint angles of the rigid model, and Q, the PCC parameterization of the soft robot. They are converted using the equations listed here. Next, I will explain how we have calculated the forces arising from the silicon properties. They were derived from an analytical model of the soft silicon materials bending. For Neohookian models, the stress S along the longitudinal direction when the silicone is stretched lambda is modeled as such. Then for piece bending at a constant curvature, when the bending angle is theta, the stretch at distance x from the neutral bending plane can then be modeled with this equation. By integrating the stress S over the entire cross section, we can get the bending moment Me caused by the stiffness of the silicone material. Here, the fiber, fiber reinforcement limits the stretching in the radial direction and allows the assumption that the cross-sectional shape is always constant. So here we see that this is linear for the bending angle theta, thus enabling a linear model for the bending stiffness. In this experiment, we have verified the accuracy of the dynamic model through feedforward actuation. The same pressure was input into the physical robot and the dynamic model, and the tip position error between them was measured. We can see that the model could, could predict the tip position at around 2 cm accuracy. Finally, the last design principle is for the arm to have full proprioception. Supra has internal sensors that can take proprioceptive measurements of the arm pose. Soft robotic arms are often dependent on external motion capture systems to take measurements of the arm pose. These sensors can be used even when mocap systems are not available, improving independence of the arm. The BendLab sensor that we have used has an output that is not affected by the sensor path. The measurement only depends on the relative orientation between the beginning and the end. So the two sensor shapes here would output the same signal. We have formulated our model to have three PCC segments spanning across a single flex sensor. Thus, the measurement by the sensor S can be described as the sum of the bending angle of each PCC element. Thus, this can be expanded into a linear relationship between the sensor measurement vector S and the pose Q of the soft, uh, well, entire soft robot. Thus, it is possible to estimate the state of the robot from sensor measurements alone. In this experiment, we estimate the load at the tip of the arm by combining sensor measurements and the dynamic model. By solving these linear equations under the constraint derived from the sensor measurements, 
we can obtain a best guess of the external force at the tip. The experiment was done in four different postures, and the results are shown here. It can be seen that it has achieved consistent estimates across different postures and different objects. However, the absolute weight estimates were off by about a factor of two. So these were the three design principles for our robot arm, Sopra. We hope to continue development on Sopra by improving its hardware robustness as well as the model accuracy. Thank you very much for listening.